in a world full of conventional Hollywood cliches and recurring lackluster sequels, one critic has seen it all who can provide you with all the movie news, opinions, and reviews that could very well save humanity as we know it. This is Libby's Movie Hunt. And now, your host, Libby Hunt. Hi, welcome to Libby's Movie Hunt. I'm your host, Libby Hunt, along with Kevin E. Hello, hello. Welcome back. Hi. I just walked in right from, um, it's my birthday's on Sunday. Happy so early birthday. Thank you. Just had a little birthday lunch with some girlfriends, so we're just buzzing in. I'm not liking birthdays as much as I used to, but still I think have to that celebrate. happens. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty common thread. Is I mean, I, I, I already don't like my birthday anymore. Oh, you should. The last 30. one I really liked was 21. Oh, you should like 30, though. But you know who I celebrate a birthday with? Oprah Winfrey. Oh, that's pretty cool. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Um, but as I've gotten older, you know, one thing about my birthday as a parent is I, it's my one day. Because, you know, Mother's Day is really about, still about my mother. Christmas is about the kids. Mother, my birthday is my day. I can say to everybody, no, I'm not going to get that for you because today is my birthday. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so that's that. Well, you have that to look forward to, yes, for sure. Yes, I have that Sunday. I can use that all day long. So welcome, everybody. We're glad to have you at Libby's Movie Hunt here at WatchOnAirLive.com at Vocal Media. And um, I just got back from the Sundance Film Festival in Park City, Utah, and Kevin, it was so much fun. Oh my God, I saw your pictures. I was super jealous. Yes. Y'all follow it Libby's awesome. Movie Hunt Facebook page. You can see all my celebrity sightings. There were some good ones on there. So next year you have to go. John Hamm's my most jealous one. John Hamm. Do you love uh, Mad Men? Yes, I'm a huge Mad Men. See, I never fan. watched it. Should I watch it on Netflix? Oh yeah, definitely. I would love it. Yeah. I know everybody loves it. I didn't like it at first. Um, when it first came out, I watched it and I thought it was kind of boring. And I'm just mm-hmm. like, eh, it didn't really grab me. And then one night they were doing a marathon, and just caught some random episode. It hooked me in in like season three, and ended up watching the marathon all the way to the end. Okay, good. I I'll do that. Because I, I, I need a good something on Netflix to watch. But yeah, it was fun to see him. He's very handsome. Yeah, that was very, very cool. So that we talked about Sundance Film Festival. Robert Redford started 25 years ago for independent artists to make films. And um, they screen them. And the celebrities like doing these art house films. They come and they do a panel discussion afterwards. So I went last year also. And I went this year. And you go see about three or four movies a day, one movie a day, whatever you want. And there's panel discussion. But what I discovered this year, Kevin was the Hollywood Reporter Studio on Main Street. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, my sister-in-law loves celebrity stalking like I do. She parked herself out there for eight hours and took pictures of celebrities. So she was my paparazzi. So she saw tons. She saw everybody. Yeah. So the next day she left. I parked myself out there in the snow for four hours and just (laughs) Just introduced myself to celebrities and talked to them. And I didn't get any interviews or anything, but they're walking up and down the street. They're coming in and out. There's a little bit of paparazzi there, but mostly there's just people like you and I that love movies and want to have a sighting. Sure. So it was a blast. I haven't had a whole lot in my life. You know, I, would, I need to see more celebrities. Well, it's just fun to see them in person. I mean, they're it just is. people. Yeah. But like Tim Robbins, Shawshank Redemption, okay? One of my favorite top five. So nice. He is literally six feet seven. The tallest thing you've ever seen. That was so surprising. Yeah, I don't know why. I, did not, yeah. I would not expect that. So tall. Most of them are tiny really little people in person. But it was really just, I go to LA every year and go all around town trying to have a sighting of a celebrity. I saw more celebrities in two days than I've seen in five years. That you've ever seen going to LA? Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Okay. But here's my best sighting. Okay. I am at, there's a restaurant Robert Redford opened last year called Zoom. It's kind of a burger joint. And all my friends are in there and they're like, I had a big group of girls with me. We had so much fun. They're like, Libby, I was leaving a screening, they go, you've got to get in here. Robert Redford is here. And he's like 80, but I love him. He's gorgeous. He's just he's just my man. And I ran three blocks in the sleet and snow. My sister said she's never seen me run, first of all, <laughs> let alone that, that fast. I get in there. I'm literally seated a foot from him, Robert Redford. And so we were being cool, left him alone. He had, po- you know, his bodyguards oh, with him. Oh, of course. So, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. You were his known. entourage. Yeah, you had. And he was with about four people. He got up, and I tapped his arm, and I said, Mr. Redford, we love your festival. And he, he looked me right eye in the eyes and he goes, we do it for you. I'm like, are you kidding? How that- many times do you think he said that? I, I know, but is that the best line? <laughs> it's a perfect line. Is that the perfect line? It's a perfect line. We do it for you. And then yeah. I go, they're in there. I wanted just a little more talking with him. I said, um, we love your restaurant too. And he goes, oh, thank you. So 
Those were my words to Robert Redford. So not only did you see him, but you actually interacted. Yes, and touched his arm. Yes, <laughs> actual physical contact. Yes. And then my other fun person I talked to, Sam Elliott, you know, with the golden voice. Oh, yes, of course. Been in Roadhouse. The stranger from the Big Lebowski. <laughs> yes. Well, he was getting in his car, and you won't even remember this movie. It came out, it was before you were born in 1974, called The Bodyguard, I mean, The Lifeguard. I don't know that. And I went up to him and I go, Mr. Elliott, I've loved you since The Lifeguard. It was my first R-rated movie to sneak into. My mom wouldn't allow me to go to it. And he goes, oh, honey, that ages both of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a... That's a that was a long time ago. Yeah. So. It's weird, though. He's one of those guys who, throughout the decades, doesn't seem to change that much as far, no. as, far as the way he looks. He, lo- he didn't look... Because I saw the, your pictures, and yeah. I mean, he looks pretty much the same as I remember him from The Big Lebowski. Yeah, and that movie's looked- like 15 years old now. Yeah, he looked good. I said, oh, then I also did that, the guy that it was that the big, Le, you know, Jeff Bridges character in the Big Lebowski. The dude. The dude. I saw the actual real dude that that character's based on oh, in that's Zoom. Cool. Wow. Isn't that funny that I even knew that is weird? That but, is a little bit, but you know, that's that's kind of what we do. That's so. what we do. We know yeah. weird facts about movies. Um, Jack Black was darling and fun to meet. Uh, he looked, he was cute. And Woody Harrelson, Woody Harrelson won very friendly. But Laura really? Dern was real sweet. That's a bummer. I love Woody Harrelson. Yeah, but his movie he had there, Wilson, was good. I bet it'll get picked up. And and then uh, Jack Black did a movie called The Polka King. It's about this real life polka king band that he'd up in Pennsylvania that had a Ponzi scheme. And Jack Black pe- played that character. It was kind of like Bernie, but Polka King Bernie. Okay. It was good. Bernie's a good movie. You'll, you'd like this one. Um, I want to ask, because you said you were surprised at how tall Sam Elliott was. Was there anyone well, that you Tim thought... Tim Robbins. Tim Robbins. That's right. Tim Robbins. Um, you said it was like 6'7 or something. So tall. Um, is there anybody that you thought was tall that ended up being small? Robert Redford. I thought he was probably... I had heard he was a small person, but he's... I'm I would have thought six feet at least. Oh, no. I'm 5'8". He was 5'8". Oh, my God. But he also is 80. He may have shrunk. But I, I bet he only was ever 5'10". I wonder if... Uh, what about Paul Newman? I mean, was he tall? I don't think he's real tall. Tom Cruise is 5'7", I think. I think I mean, Mel Gibson is only 5'9". I know. So, that was that. So, I had fun. So, if anybody... You know, whether you're a movie critic, movie lover, Sundance Film Festival, it's kind of hard to get tickets, but you can buy individual tickets. I highly recommend... You viewers going. And your pictures were awesome. I highly recommend anybody go check them out. Facebook.com slash Libby's Movie Hunt. See all the See. celebrity sightings. And yeah, it was I great. Took a lot. I was super jealous. I was going to video blog from there, but I did one and my friend cut my head off and it was so noisy <laughs> in the background that I never did it again. You just forget it. I, yeah. need, I need you, a real camera yeah. operator, to would go with me next year. Oh, I'd be happy to. So we'll plan it. Any out. excuse, yeah. So let's talk about movies. Also, we'll talk about Academy Award nominations, but since I was just blabbing so much, you saw Resident Evil. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't saw a goofy one. I, okay. I, I, I need to step it up and see because you always check out all the the good art stuff. house type, yeah, popular, you know, and, and I and I see more of the mass appeal goofy ones. Which don't get me wrong, I like all kinds yeah. of movies, but um, yeah, I need to step it up and start seeing more of the heavy hitting ones. But I have seen most of the films nominated for Best Picture this year. But Resident Evil is it a science? It's science fiction because I saw the first one. It's science fiction horror, I would call it. Um, there's definitely a sci-fi aspect to it, but mm-hmm. I would say it's more action horror oriented. Are there like Drac- Dracula and Frankenstein in it, or am I thinking something else? No, okay, so oh, this is Mia Mila Mila Jovovich, yes, um, and her husband directed it. Yeah, and there's it's 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 a zombie film basically, right. but it's also a monster movie mm-hmm. there because the Umbrella Corporation, the evil bad guys who've been in the entire series, right. create these mutant strange monsters that are always popping up somehow. I mean, it's it's ridiculous, but I did go see it. What do you think? What do you give it? Um, you know, it's weird. If if you've never seen any of the films, if you're not in any way a fan, you're probably not going to like it. I mean, you might be mildly entertained, but you're probably going to look at it as mostly stupid. I mean, I don't even want to waste time saying what the plot is because it's like people listen and say, who cares? It basically goes back to where the first film started in Umbrella City or uh, Raccoon City where the evil Umbrella Corporation is right. rounding up all their troops for, for this final battle, basically. Um, and it, it, it's good action, it's good 3D, it's good entertainment. If you've seen the other ones and you like it, it's absolutely popcorn-worthy. I mean, okay. it, it's very entertaining. What number is it in this, seri- in this series? I think it's number six. Because oh I kept up with them for a while, but I missed um, I missed the one most... Uh, previous to this one, that's what I was trying to say. Because there was one, two, three, and then Afterlife, and then Retribution, which I did not see, and this is the final chapter, which closes out the whole series. It needs to. But yeah, see, it really I, does. I, I mean, saw the first one. Year, it hadn't been years ago. Really long time ago. I was in 
You were a kid? Yeah, I was really young. I may have been in like eighth grade. Well, I saw it, and I didn't, um, I didn't understand it. Yeah, it, the first one's terrible. Um, it, it's not even good, like, in a bad way, like, so bad it's good. Uh, or two, I thought was, it was, like, really campy and cheesy, and I actually enjoyed it. And then three, Extinction, I really enjoyed. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the one after that, Afterlife, was meh, and then I didn't see Retribution, but this one, I'm like, I want to see the final chapter. So but I say it's popcorn would, worthy. Why would they remake it so many times? I mean, why? There must why be so a, many sequels? There, there must be a following. There has to be a following. But it's not you or me. Uh, you, no. I would think it would be you. It's all right. I mean, it's just yeah. so goofy and campy. Okay, uh, what about the one I it's thought... It's hard to take seriously. When you were... T- say you were going to talk about this one today. I thought you were talking about the one with Kate Beckinsale that we didn't go see. Um, oh, Underworld. You d- that's the more the Draculas and Frankensteins that take that's over. That's the werewolves and the vampires. Right. Thing. Yep. And I l- kind of liked the first one, but see, oh, I totally... What did you think about... What did you give that? You didn't see that last one. I didn't one. see we that We didn't even one. go. Once they switched actresses from Kate Beckinsale, right. I gave up on it. and mm-hmm. But now she's back in it, and I think she's done two. Okay. Well, she's a great actress. She is great. And but so is Mila... Yeah, I mean, you know, Joe Vish didn't get a lot of roles. But, I mean, she's kind of known as a sci-fi icon these days with all the stuff she's been in from The you, Fifth Element to Resident Evil. I saw th- she's in a good movie with Edward Norton and um, Robert De Niro. She plays a, a uh, Edward Norton, who's in jail's wife. And I've got to f- think about that movie, but I come across it every once in a while. It's good. Yeah, she, it's a good role for her. About. You know, she was also in a movie about s- these kind of psycho people that, you know, the guy that's married to Fergie? That yeah. actor, Josh, Josh Dumel. Yeah, she plays his wife in a movie where they're lost up in the mountains and they take this other couple and they murder him or something. It's really good. I do vaguely remember that. That was good. Yeah, those that was are, cool. I'm, you were saying she didn't get many roles. I was like, she, those are kind of some interesting roles she's played. She's a good actress. Yeah, one of her first roles um, is one of my favorite films of all time, Dazed and Confused. Oh, she was in that. She's in that. Oh, okay, how funny. in a small part too. Like I can't even remember her character name, but she's in it throughout the whole film. And well, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that was her first movie. That's funny because it's a lot of Texans in that movie, and she, I don't think she's from Texas. Okay, well, speaking of Days no, that's and, a good point. <laughs> speaking of Days and Confused, I saw Gold with Matthew McConaughey last night. Yes. And um, actually, while I'm talking about it, look up the director. This is one I got to look up real quick. Yeah. And the, the uh, Matthew McConaughey and Bryce is uh, Bryce Dallas Howard plays his wife, and Matthew. Um, plays a guy, his, took over his father's mining company, he died, and he wanted to find gold, and he goes to, I believe it's Indonesia, and uh, hooks up with this other guy, and it's just kind of like, um, kind of maybe the Big Short, or Wall Street, not or um, what's that one you like so much? Wolf, Wolf of, of Wall, Wall Street. Street. It's got a little bit of that feel to it, um, but it was it was good. I, I, I give it popcorn worthy. I'd say Matthew McConaughey gives gets a Oscar level performance, but this is my question: being a movie person, okay, and maybe you know, since the Oscars were just nominated this week, and that movie came out, it only came out this week, so it would qualify for next year. Yeah, it, it's a 2017 film. Yes, so he he re- it will probably be forgotten by next year, but he he was good. You know, he put on like 20, 30, 40 pounds for the role, had his hair. Made it look like he was bald and bad cat teeth. I was going to say, on. he looks really bad in it. He from looks really <laughs> from bad. The trailers that I saw. He looks really bad. But, uh, the um, director, yeah, is Stephen. Um, I don't even know how you say his I don't know what he's name. done. but uh, He's done a lot of... He, he, was a, he, was, he was a screenwriter on some good films like Traffic. That was a great movie. That's it. He was a screenwriter on some terrible films like I Still Know What You Did Last Summer. Yeah. And then, I actually uh, kind of liked that movie. <laughs> the sequel? And the first one. I, I liked the first one. Kinda, yeah. Um, oh, as I still yeah, knew I what st- you did. Okay. Exactly. Um, and then he did Syriana. Oh, huh. Well, what, is, what are we looking at on Rotten Tomatoes for gold? I think it did pretty well. Um, they're going to go ahead and call it Bag Full of Kernels, I think, on really? Rotten Tomatoes. Well, it's got 33%. Well, that see, see, yeah. Resident Evil be half popped because it's mm. in that forty five percent range. So I was again talking with my son Dallas about it last night, and he, I was like, you know, what I give that movie is mildly popcorn worthy. So is that half popped? I don't know. You it know? looks like yeah, for the most part, critics definitely agree with you on Matthew McConaughey's performance. The consensus says. Gold boasts an impressively committed performance from Matthew McConaughey, but it's just one glittering nugget in an otherwise uneven heap of cinematic silt. Glittering nugget, I love it. Yeah, because it's about gold. But yeah. and something, there's a twist at the end that I, I always like a movie that has a little something at the end interesting. But uh, yeah, no, I do too. Um, yeah, I y'all, you know, 
there's so many good movies out right now because of Oscars being nominated. Go see some of these other things. But Goal, it's mildly popcorn worthy. And if you want to just see a really good performance by Matthew McConaughey, go. That's how I'm going to write it. And I lo- I'll see pretty much anything that he's in. He's one of my favorite oh, actors. He's great. And speaking of Woody Harrelson, you brought up earlier, one of mm. his favorite performances of mine was True Detective on HBO alongside oh, Matthew McConaughey. And I thought so they were just good. so good together. So good. They're both just great, They're great. great actors. And this put it all out there. Um, the other movie I saw, I can't believe you didn't go see it, Split. Yeah, Split is one. I, that's what I should have gone to see. You should have gone to see it. But I need you to go see it. because My inner nerd wanted to lean towards Resident Evil. Yeah. But I need you. I, but by next week, you need to go see Split because uh, okay, James McAvoy stars in it, and it's obviously directed by M Night Shyamalan, who I'm a huge fan of. He hasn't had a really big hit since uh, The Sixth Sense in 2000, I believe. I think that was yeah. You and I like or Signs. Signs was pretty was pretty well. Received. I liked The Village. I liked uh, The Grandparents, The Visitors last year. But his others, me. Yeah, I mean not the too good. the happening is when I went and saw opening night. Didn't and like that, knew, Mark Wahlberg. No, no, not good. But okay, so split. Tell me what Rotten Tomatoes says about it, because again, um, I don't know what to tell you about this movie. It it also has this darling actress Anya Taylor Joy. She was in that movie about oh the robot last year, not Ex Machina, but. And then also Betty Buckley, a a Fort Worth native, plays his psychiatrist in it, who I think she's a fantastic actress. She was the mother on Eight is Enough. Yeah. Betty Buckley. And she also uh, won a Tony Award for Cats when it first came on Broadway. A little tidbit there. Oh, is is Morgan the film you were thinking of? Morgan. Yeah. So the star girl that stars in this is in was the star of Morgan, which I Anna Taylor Joy. Yes, I really liked her. But James McAvoy um, plays a guy that has twenty three personalities. But with M. Night Shyamalan, what they, he wanted to do with this movie, this is, you've got to go see it because I quite didn't understand it. So I guess I can tell you, he kidnaps three girls. Yeah, I think that's kind of, I mean, they let Everybody, you know that. They let that. you know yeah. that. He takes them underground somewhere. I don't want to tell you that because it'll give something away. And he has these 23 personalities. And you need to, you know why the girl, and Anya, the girl that, the star that uh, Morgan, why she had, she was abused in her childhood. That's why you know she's going to, beat this guy because she has such coping skills. But you don't know why he was so... He was abused by his mother, but they don't delve into that enough. You There's want not enough of an origin story background. for him. You need a more origin. And then... But you would see there, and he would be standing there looking at the camera, looking at someone, and the acting, I mean, he would have five different personalities within one minute. It was amazing how he could switch his face from a man to a woman to a child it's pretty fascinating. And it's hard. I know it's probably difficult to talk about a Shyamalan film without giving things away just because he is known for those kind of twists. Well, there's a twist at the end that this is why I want you to go see it. I have no idea. So there's this beast that comes out of the 23 personalities. That's in the write-up. I'm not giving anything right, away. Right, right, right. But I still don't understand. it. I, I, I've had several people try and explain it to me, and I still... I'm confused. Well, I, I, that makes me... I'm going to ask you this then, um, because I'm still upset about this. Somebody ruined yeah. the end of The uh, Sixth Sense before I saw it. Oh. I'm like, God, that's such a huge reveal at the end. Oh, no, yeah. But then me and another movie fan have gone back and forth on this, and we can never come to a point where we've convinced the other one. But I, I always say uh, that... Um, what's his name? Haley Joel Osment's character does not know that Bruce Willis is a ghost. No. And he somebody argued, somebody argued with me. They said, "No, he definitely knows the whole time." And I'm oh, like, no, "I don't think knew. so." No, he never knew. They say, "No, he knows," and the audience doesn't. I'm like, "No, I think he didn't know the whole time." No, he didn't know. And Bruce yeah. Willis, because Bruce Willis didn't know he was a ghost. Oh, yeah, I'm so glad you agree yeah. with me on that. No, okay. absolutely, absolutely. The but kid is unaware that he's a ghost. Totally unaware that he's one of the dead. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Because um, he has no physical markings on him the way that the others do. You know. Exactly. So. No, but this this one does something like that at the end too. I so please go see it so you can. And maybe have I even though I didn't love it, even though I loved James McAvoy's, um, a, you know, performance, it'd be worth it to see it again. I didn't love. The, I'm giving it another pop popcorn. Mildly popcorn worthy with an Oscar level performance by James McAvoy. Well, it's certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes with a 75%, oh. you know, comfortably in the popcorn worthy range. It actually has a higher audience score, 83% of uh, audience members liked it. And the consensus says Split serves as a dramatic tour de force for James McAvoy in multiple roles and finds writer director M. Night Shyamalan returning resoundingly to thrilling form. Oh. So, I mean, overall, it's, it's a good consensus. And I'm just glad Shyamalan has a hit. I, know. I think you'll like it. You know, he's in a lot of his movies, and I'm pretty sure he's in this one for a minute as a computer nerd. Oh, okay. He has so a brief little... I think it's him. Because he definitely has a cameo in Signs. And, and of, uh, several of them. So, 
Um, but please go see it so we can talk about it next week. And but. Signs is a movie I love, by the way, but it's funny. The more I watch it, the more stupid I realize it is. Yes. It's like, these have to be the dumbest aliens of all time. <laughs> I mean, they have, it just it doesn't make a lot of sense, but still very entertaining. Good well, movie. Well, and we loved it because Mel Gibson was in oh, it. Oh, and Come it's on. got Mel Gibson, of course. And let's talk about Mel Gibson, please. Redemption for him being nominated for an Oscar for his picture, Best Picture. I'm so happy about that. Hollywood forgave him. Best Director was best as well, right? Well, I don't know if he got Best Director. I know he's up for Best Picture. Yeah, I know Best Picture. I don't remember Director. I'll I don't either. I, I don't know if I have that written down, but I I know he's listed. I'm clunking around here for best picture. Um, so let's talk about that. So the Oscar 89th Academy Award nominations came out. It will air February 26th on ABC. And literally, it's my favorite night of the year. It's great. And I just found out I have to go to something that night. And I'm like, are you kidding? Ooh. I may have to bail. That's, uh, yeah. I like to be at that's home a tough with one. Marco's Pizza. That's, that's your Super Bowl. That is, that's my, that's my <laughs> night. So, okay, best picture. I'll read off. Well, no, best actor. I need to tell y'all who best picture. And later what I'll do, it's kind of fun. I've done it the past few years on Facebook and Instagram before I had the podcast. I would put who should win, who will win, and um, who got snubbed. Right. So I already have some ideas of that. But best picture was La La Land, Moonlight, Manchester by the Sea, Arrival, Fences, Lion, Hidden Figures, Hacksaw Ridge and Hell or High Water. And I re- I'm disappointed at how few nominations Hell or High Water got. I know. I was expecting a Best Director nomination and definitely Best uh, Supporting Actor from Ben Foster. Nothing. No, nothing. Screenplay? Yep. Nothing. No, nothing. Did Michael Shannon? No, that was Nick Turner. Not Nocturnal Animals. Animals yeah. yeah. So what do you do? You think anybody was left off that list to ten? No, I, I would say I great. Well, uh, uh, the, the nice guys. Yes. I loved that. I thought it was totally it was snubbed. Great. But yeah. Now, the founder came out last week. Would that have been included? It wasn't. didn't make it in time. So would that I don't be... think it made it in time. I think it's a, yeah, it's a 2017 film. Because to me, it's, it could be Best Picture. It was great. Maybe they should have held off on releasing I know, that. just a or, week or two. Or, or, yeah. I loved it. Um, but I think uh, La La Land is the big story that got 14 nods, tying of all time with Titanic and All About Eve for the most of any movie in history. La La Land. Isn't yep. that interesting? I told you that's my pick. That's my yeah. prediction well, for what I think will win. Pr- here's here's I'll go ahead and tell you right now, who I think should win Best Picture is Hell or High Water. Who I think will win is La La Land. Yeah, me too. That's that's my prediction. Yep. Um, I'll tell. I'll do a breakdown. Nominations by movie: La La Land got fourteen nominations. Arrival got eight. Moonlight got eight. Hacksaw Ridge got six. Manchester by the Sea got six. Fences got four. Hell or High Water got four. Two snubs to me were Amy Adams for Arrival. Um, I, that surprised me. I thought she would have been nominated. It was a beautiful role. And I thought, and I am just blown away that Annette Bening wasn't nominated for 20th Century Woman. Maybe, yeah, those are two I would have thought would but, be on there for sure. But maybe Annette Bening, like I said, maybe 20th Century Women f- fell under this year. Yeah, it's always, you know, because it was film, right the week yeah. before the Oscars. And I know something to do that on purpose, just so that it'll skate in right at the right. end. Right. But I don't know if she this was nominated was one that for Golden Globe, and I think she won. Oh, okay. I mean, so, they may have different deadlines too. I, think I don't they know do. what what counts for each one. Because I I think if it if it was this year, Annette Bening would she would just get it and be, she would be nominated. Um, best actor. Want me to read those? Yes. Oh, by the way, Mel Gibson is on best director. Oh, yay! So he's, yeah. Well, yeah. If you have the best director, I don't have that. Oh, do you have? Uh, well, well, okay, I do. I do. Um, I've got it's Damien Chazelle from La La Land. Yes. Barry Jenkins, Moonlight. Dennis Villeneuve, Villeneuve, <laughs> Arriva. And I was surprised Arriva. to see that one on there. I was too. Kenneth, Kenneth Lonergan, um, Manchester. Manchester by the Sea. Mel Gibson, Hacksaw Ridge. Yeah, so that's... And then um, did you mention Barry Jenkins, Moonlight? Yes, Moonlight, okay. Barry Jenkins. Yeah, Arrival's one. I was surprised to see on there. I'm just so glad Mel Gibson... The, the whole the Me too. Re- redemption is complete. <laughs> yeah. He got he got nominated. The, the Mel Gibson embargo has been lifted as far as the Academy is concerned. I think. Well, and the guy who did La La Land also did Whiplash. Oh, okay. Did you know that? that yeah, director? I did not know that. And that's a, that's a great movie. So good. Those are such polar opposite type films. Yeah, and you know he had a small part in La La Land. The the guy who won the Best Actor, the character actor with the bald head, and he was also in Patriots Day. 
Oh, um, uh, but he so he that director they must work well together. Are you talking about um, J.K. Simmons? Yes. Okay. He's he has a small part in La La. La. Did you see La La Land? No, I've not seen it yet. Oh, you don't like musicals? Though. I don't, and I'm shocked because my brother who does like musicals and lives in L.A. went and mm. saw it, and he didn't like it. Well, some of my actor friends haven't liked it. They I think they feel like it's kind of predictable, and they think Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone aren't great singers, which they're not. That's what I heard. That's is that they're. But it doesn't matter. It's a darling sto- story. It's great choreography. Great. Um, it's just, it's really good. And I think we mentioned this before that films, and I think it won Best Picture, like Chicago, definitely mm-hmm. had some people who were not great singers. Exactly. But, you know, it didn't stop it from being a great movie. Well, it's just, it's a great movie. I don't think it should win Best Picture, but I think it's very, very good. I'm just so glad to see something different. Okay. You and I like the darker ones better, so we're going to favor Hell or High Water or Nocturnal Animals, we, we something just like are. that. Yeah. We just are. Those are my favorite. Okay, this is a surprise to me. Best actor, not, okay, Casey Affleck, Manchester by the Sea. Andrew Garfield, Hacksaw Ridge. I thought he was great, but I think he you should... You liked him better in... Silence. Yes. Martin Scorsese's movie. Ryan Gosling, La La Land. Viggo Mortensen, Mortensen for Captain Fantastic. Denzel Washington Fences. V- I, I don't even know what that is. Wait. Captain Fantastic? Yeah. I don't... What... I have I don't did I even is see it. Is that on it? anyone's radar? Like, did you I, see it? I don't I've never heard of it. What the heck? Was it an is he is that a comic book? I I have no idea what that is. Captain America must be a comic book. Yeah, definitely. But that's it's something I saw where I'm like where did this come from? Best actor. In fact, I'm going to pull that up real Can quick. Can we get some scoop on that? Look up that while I'm reading the other. What, what was it called again? Captain Fantastic. Captain Fantastic. Vigo Mortensen, which I love him, but okay, then best supporting actor and you remember I couldn't say this name, Marharla Shala oh, right. Ali. Yes. And I can't. I'm Moonlight, can't. fantastic. Yeah. Jeff Bridges, Hell or High Water, yay. And do you know a boy from, a, Taylor Sheridan went to Pascal High School who wrote Hell or High Water. Oh, wow. Isn't that interesting? Look. Very interesting. Lucas Hedges, Manchester by the Sea, Dev Patel, Lion, and Michael Shannon, Nocturnal Animals. Those are all best supporting. And the only one on there that I didn't see coming is uh, Viggo Mortensen. Uh, yeah. That, now, on best supporting actor... I would Lucas Hedges was the young man in that Manchester by the Sea. I saw that, but I would have rather seen Ben Foster. Yes, I mean I thought he was exceptional. And Chris Pine was good too, but I don't know that he was Oscar caliber. Where Ben Foster both, was Oscar, he caliber. was he was great. And now, Jeff Bridges got the nomination for supporting. I know why. Okay, supporting Jeff Bridges and Deb Patel Lion, and to me those are both more main characters. I would think so too. So Ben Foster, I would say, would be more of a supporting. Uh, that's funny to me. I guess they just wanted him in there, so that's they got him in. I guess. Okay, best actress, Isabel Hubert in Elle. It's a foreign film. She, it was fantastic, if you, if you like foreign films. She won the Golden Globe. Um, Ruth Nega in Loving. I think that's how you say her last name. Natalie Portman, Jackie. Emma Stone, La La Land. Meryl Streep, Florence Foster Jenkins. So, Were any, any of those surprises to you? Um, No. I did, I was kind of surprised by Jackie. I didn't know that it was that well received. She was really good in it, but it was I don't I didn't like the movie. Really weird, but I thought she she was definitely Oscar. I think she might win. I think she might win. Um, if it if they give it to Emma Stone, that's kind of silly. That was kind of a silly role. Yeah, it should be Annette Bening, but she's not on there. And back, uh, just real quick on supporting act, Jeff Bridges did win before. Oh wait, he won for leading, I believe, in um, Crazy Heart. That's right. I was thinking True Grit, but I think it was mm-hmm. Crazy Heart. So this, yes. this would be his second Oscar for him, I think. Yeah, but to me, he had a lead role. Yeah, I mean, Isn't he's a pretty odd? central character. Who else would be the lead? The I, boys? I would consider Chris Pine definitely a lead. Chris Pine and Ben... Yeah, so maybe that's it. Well, whatever. He would be the main lead, I Whatever, suppose. we're happy he got nominated. Yes, definitely. So Taylor Sheridan wrote, I've said this several times on the show, Sicario and this one, and he's also, his next movie is... Um, Something with winter in the title. It was at Sundance this year, and I couldn't see it. But this next one he wrote, but he is not going to um, direct. He's going to direct it. He's never directed for. Okay, so we wrapping up. Best. Supporting? We are wrapping up. Well, we'll get to best. We'll get to more Oscar nominations later. We still have time. Have I? Yeah. You want me to, we have time. Oh no! I next mean, just week? leading up to yeah. Yeah. <laughs> next week. Okay. Have I talked too much? I hope not. Nope, we're all good. (laughs) Okay. Well, thanks for tuning in to Libby's Movie Hunt, and we'll see you next Friday at 2 to talk more movies at watchonairlive.com. Thanks.